So wh wh where does this eight levels of relationships come from? That's something that I thought about and kind of put together specific to insurance. Because as you know, I always talk about relationships. It's my favorite part of insurance, right? Yes. I mean, the money's great. The lifestyle can be great. But truthfully, it's the relationships that you develop. Um, and that's kind of, you know, on the friendship and colleague level. But there are, in my opinion, there are eight different types or levels or stages of relationships that an agent goes through in their growth mm. pattern. Mm. Um, not all agents take advantage of all eight. Uh, four of them are absolute prerequisites. Like you can't sell insurance if you don't get the first four down. The wow. next four are extracurricular. And that's the difference between agents that make a living and yeah. agents that scale or do something massive in the industry. And welcome back to the CA Power Players Podcast. I'm hanging out. Another episode in Puerto Rico and Power Players. One of my favorite dudes in the whole wide world. This cat shows up and helps people as much as anybody I know. And that's Mr. Tony Merwin. Tony, welcome to the podcast, buddy. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. And thanks for, you know, putting us all together here in Puerto Rico. This is magnificent. Dude. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be a part of it. Thanks, buddy. It's cool to have you and Grace both here. Oh, absolutely. Um, how many trips have we been on together to destinations, periods, you know, out of the country, in the country, since in the last year? You and I? Well, as far as destination cities, this is technically our first because I had to miss the yeah. Naples event, unfortunately. But shoot, we're on the road together. Correct. So, you know, we get to go to all these other cities traveling around. We got four more of those left. Yeah. He joined the band. Okay. He's the drummer in the band. He's the, uh, or are you the lead singer? <laughs> I'm definitely not the lead singer. That's your job. <laughs> I'm not that good at singing. A though. backup vocalist, maybe. Yeah, there you go, uh, dude. Dancer, I've seen you. I've seen I, you salsa dance. I do. I do have some Come dance skills. Come on, hundred percent. We're gonna we're gonna break them out uh, probably tomorrow. Yes, a Aiden's going too. No, right I don't on. Know who he's salsa dancing with, but he's going. So I'm like, that's cool. Uh, yeah, and, and what Tony's referring to is he's in. Uh, he's on the road show, eight percent road show. And it's coming to every city next to Chicago, mm -hmm. and then Kansas City, then Denver, then L.A., then back to the main eight percent in in July. Uh, we are here for power players. Tony is no doubt a power player. Uh, there's a lot of stuff we could go through. We've talked a lot. We've done some, you know, you've done multiple of these with us. Um, had you been on the podcast though? Um, I haven't been on the power players podcast. Cool. Uh, I did the original 8% nation podcast when you were doing that. Yes. And then we did an interview at the MedSup conference. Yes. Uh, but no, this is my first time to be on the and power players podcast. So thank you. Virtual too, right? Um, I was at the virtual event. Um, I don't think we did an interview there okay. of any sort, but I was okay. there for that. And then I did a, like a post interview with yeah. some of your guys. Um, and then, uh, there was something else now I just lost it in my brain, but yeah, virtual was an awesome event. That was fun. That's cool. Well, I know one, th one concept you talk a lot about, which is really impressive. Most people may probably don't realize it yet or know it yet. Um, and you absorb a lot of content, like you're a heavy learner, uh, and you also are, have a tendency to do a really good job of sharing what you learn, which a lot of people don't do. Um, before we jump into some of the content, where's that come from? I think it just comes from an authentic uh, desire to see people do well, right? Yeah. Uh, I talked a little bit about this at 8% virtual, but um, everybody loves to experience someone else succeed or rise mm -hmm. up or, you know, or learn or elevate their game. Like we all really get charged you know, and, and assuming you authentically care about people, I mean, there right. are some sociopaths out there that don't, but the majority of good folks, right? They like watching other people do well and succeed. Yes. Yeah, they really do. Um, also, too, I'm going to throw it to you to jump into the content, but you uh, talk a lot about eight levels of relationships, which I would like to talk through today, if that's okay. Yeah. And when it comes to relationships, you do a really good job of navigating relationships constantly putting others first, um, getting in and around relationships. That's almost a whole like book in itself. You know, um, you always talk, you always talk about the art of war, mm -hmm. Sun Tzu, mm -hmm. right? Um, and the relationship piece. So wh wh where's this eight levels of relationships come from? That's something that I thought about and kind of put together specific to insurance. Cause as you know, I always talk about relationships. It's my favorite part of insurance, right? Yes. I mean, the money's great. The lifestyle can be great, but truthfully it's the relationships that you develop. 
Um, and that's kind of, you know, on the friendship and colleague level, but there are, in my opinion, there are eight different types or levels or stages of relationships that an agent goes through in their growth mm. pattern. Mm. Um, not all agents take advantage of all eight. Uh, four of them are absolute prerequisites. Like you can't sell insurance if you don't get the first four down. The wow. next four are extracurricular. And that's the difference between agents that make a living and yeah. agents that scale or do something massive in the industry yeah. are the ones that take that extracurricular step and mastering relationships. And I think a lot of that comes from uh, my father. He taught me always to have a desire to serve others, right? Yes. And so that's if, if you lead with the desire to serve other people, it's it gets pretty easy to build relationships that way. Yeah, that's a really good point too. My dad always says, um, if you go to a networking group, your goal is to refer other people first. Yep. And lead with value every time. Yeah. And you always do a really good job of that. Um, so obviously you're, you mentioned your, your dad, you know, obviously mm -hmm. that, uh, has paid off and served you well and, and you live it day to day, yeah. you know, and, and agents need to realize too, how big re this is a relationship business. hundred percent. Everything we do throughout the day hinges on relationships. And it's so like you, you can get, you don't do it for the reason of, Hey, I'm just going to get farther ahead in life because the relationships I'm going to build, but it's just what happens mm -hmm. because of that's just the way you are, mm -hmm. you know, and you're definitely that way. So what's level one? You got me, you got me intrigued by these eight levels of relationships. I'm curious what, what you guys have any guesses yet? I don't have any guesses. I'm curious what he's got. Well, how do most agents find their way into insurance? Um, someone tells them about it. That's already in it. Right. They're recruited into it in some form, whether yes. it be yes. through their warm market or maybe they answered a job ad, career ad, whatever it is. True. But most agents are recruited into insurance. So that's the first relationship. Someone introduces them to the game, ah. right? Whether that's their upline, FMO, broker, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but that's the first level, right? You have to get introduced to insurance to come into it because most people, unless... They're Joe Camper. They don't wake up and go, "Hey, I want to sell insurance for a living." I think you know? he, I think he actually may, means that too when he says <laughs> he does, that. hundred percent. As a kid, he does. he's like, "I want to be an insurance agent." <laughs> right. I wasn't even sure to be honest. Yeah. You know? I didn't even know insurance was a thing when yeah. I was a kid. I'm like, it wasn't even on the map for me. You knew people but, owned uh, it, but you probably right. did, you didn't realize people sold it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I just I remember driving through my neighborhood and I always saw the State Farm office that was in our neighborhood that was. You know, named after the guy, uh, John Phelps, that owned the agency. Like, I still remember that because I drove by it every single day. How long ago has it been since you saw that sign and you remembered the name? That's Just because probably of... been 35 to 40 years, easy. Wow. Easy. And the branding has been there and done so well, and you saw it so many times yeah. that it's just ingrained in Yeah, I you. drove by it every day. It was down the street. So, I mean, every day you drive by it and you see a sign, John Phelps State Farm, there it is. So, you know, it just... You get stuck in your brain that way. But uh, but yeah, level awesome. one, you know, you got to get introduced to the business. So that's the first relationship you develop. Yeah. Right. It makes sense. Yeah. 100%. What's level two? Level two is the state. As soon as someone introduces you insurance, what do they make you do? They make you get your license. Yes. So now you have to develop a relationship with the state, right? The state manages your license. Mm. They manage the fees, the fines, the requirements to keep your license. They set those standards. And now some people, and this isn't you know, hitting on anybody, but some people already had a relationship with the state before they got to insurance. But, uh, but <laughs> ultimately that's level two. Too. Yeah. A hundred percent. It can affect it. Yeah. So and that's the next thing you got to figure out. That makes sense. Cause if you get out of good terms with that relationship, you may not have a license anymore. Correct. Right. hundred percent. You may get fine. Who knows? Yeah. So you have to learn to take care of that and follow the, follow the rules, follow the restrictions. That's good. That makes a lot of sense. What's so, number three? Uh, number three would be the next thing that happens to you, and that's contracts, right? You get recruited, mm -hmm. they help you get your license, and the next thing your upline does is they hand you a stack of contracts to fill out. Yes. So now you're doing these contracts, you're developing a relationship with the insurance carriers that you're now going to go out and represent. And obviously you need to maintain that relationship because if you don't do a good job taking care of your insurance companies, they'll, they'll just terminate your contract. And if you're really bad at it, you may not have any carriers to sell for. That's right. And I've seen really good agents, like good agents, great producers, but they weren't, um, they weren't good for lack of a better word at the moment in managing that relationship with the carrier, uh, right? They were abusive towards them on the phone when things didn't go right, things of that nature. They weren't professional. So dumb. And the next thing you know, they're like, oh, you're terminated and they'll just blacklist them and you'll never work with that carrier ever again, right? Period. So you, again, sure. And a lot of agents forget this in the contract that says it, assuming that you're reading any of them, that you are an agent of the company. We all like to think we're an agent of our customer, right? And as long as we're acting in our customer's best interest, we are. But ultimately the contract says 
you're an agent of the carrier, so you have to always represent that carrier uh, with with their interest in mind, right? And uphold the standards that they believe that are ethical in their brand and so forth. That makes so much sense. Most people don't recognize or realize how important that relationship is. Why are some agents just, they're just jerks to carriers. They're not, was it that they just weren't properly trained? They weren't raised right? They don't know any better? Where do we go with that? Because I, I, I'm thinking of a lot of agents that are coming in the business. This is really important, you guys, because you think about it. He talked about being recruited, getting licensed, having products to sell, contracts, carriers, right? If you aren't licensed with carriers, you have nothing to sell. Correct. You are you licensed no without a product. Correct. Which is pretty pretty vital to this whole yeah, yeah. sales thing. It's like owning a store with no products on the shelves. You're just standing in there in an empty shell of a store paying rent. Correct. Like, you can't do business that way. So um, as, as far as like what those agents maybe are struggling with, I don't know if it's a control thing. It's, ob- it's ultimately fear. And carriers yeah. make mistakes, right? When you pump the kind of volume that we're pushing through a lot of these carriers, stuff's going to fall through the cracks. A commission's not going to get paid on time. A policy's not going to get notated right. Stuff happens. Yes. So, but you have to understand that, yes, stuff happens. But when those things happen, you have to help them manage it and fix it professionally. You can't call up the carrier and start screaming at them and using foul language and stuff like that. And I've seen agents do it, you know, agents so, that I've worked with. And I've had to be the one that calls them and like, hey, man, you can't talk to these people that way. Right. You have to be right. a professional on the phone, period, when you're when you're dealing with these insurance companies and ironing problems out. Yeah. You can also just do dumb stuff to clients or to that people hear about. And then that can end up getting your stuff terminated, too. Absolutely. You know? So how you talk to the carriers, mm-hmm. but also how you just treat other people in general. Or if you do something dumb, it's going to, yeah. you know. I think a lot of people forget how, even though it's a big industry, it gets pretty small and word gets around, oh right? Gosh. If they find out you treat carriers abusively or or you're not following the app properly, you're clean sheeting apps, things like that. Like, yeah, believe me, we all share information. We're like, oh, you don't want to work with that dude. Like, these are some of the things that we've experienced with him, you know. So, mm. yeah, ultimately, your reputation exists. And if you plan on being insurance for a long time, you need to uphold that reputation. Yeah. Because people are going to find out about you one way or another. I also know people that are building agencies like you. They talk. And if somebody doesn't work out somewhere, they're not probably not going to work out somewhere else. Yeah. You know, in Very a true. lot of cases. And, I'm, and, and it's kind of interesting how you don't want to get a bad rap with an agency owner that's in a network connected and close with a lot of other agency owners, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Word does travel. We know we do, especially in some of these tight knit groups like here, right? Like we're going to, you know, we're not talking bad about you, but we're going to help each other out and share. And if anything's true in any facet of business, Correct. bad words travel faster than good words, right? You go have a really bad experience at a restaurant or something. You're going to tell everybody, don't go eat there, right? Don't hire that guy. Yes. That's a problem waiting to happen. He's a debt. He's this or whatever. Yeah. You know, we're looking out for each other in that same aspect. You have a great experience. You might tell one friend. Correct. You know, kind of thing. So Correct. bad words always travel faster. So keep keep your reputation solid. Yeah. And, and at that carrier level, it's a stru- super important. Um, that's go ahead. good. That's good. That's how that, that's we were talking about those types of agents uh, earlier today when I referenced you in, in the meeting. Oh, I got your reference wrong, but uh, it was funny. You know, that's yes, interesting. 100 yeah. percent. Yeah. What's level four? Level four is the obvious one. Most people think of and that's your customers and clients. Yeah. If you don't have any customers or clients, well, you're. Don't have any, you know, you have all the product in the world, but if you can't find clients to sell them to, you're stuck. So everybody kind of comes up with that one pretty easily to figure out, well, I got to find customers. You know, yeah. I have to have good customers That's and you have to take commission. care of your customers. Yeah. Right. If you don't take good care of your customers, looking out in their best interest, taking care of them, really reaching out for them. Uh, well, eventually you won't have any customers. That's right. <laughs> They're going to find out pretty quick. Well, this guy doesn't care. He's not interested in me. I'll just go find a policy somewhere else. You know, whether maybe you oversold them a rate or you sold them a product that's not in their best interest, whatever it is. Happens mm-hmm. all the time, you know. And even sometimes you're really working in the best intention, but unfortunately there are bad apples out there that twist language and stuff and still steal policies from you. But ultimately, those people will find their way back to you, right? Happens all the time. It happens True. with Grace's agency. You know, somebody, call center or whoever it is, calls them and tells them blah, blah, blah to get them to move their policy. And then they do and they find out pretty quick, whoops, that was a mistake. Where do they go running back to? They go run back to the original person that took great care of them. So uh, always work in the best interest of your clients. That's a huge relationship that you have to manage. 
And those first four levels, those are the prerequisites, right? Every yeah. agent's, you have to do that to even be in the business, period, right? You gotta have an upline, you gotta get a license, you gotta get some contracts and you gotta go find customers. But a lot of agents stop at those four and there are four more that are extracurricular that if you really get into and dive into, uh, you can grow a much larger business than just being a self-employed insurance agent. That's actually really smart. I'm excited to dive into these because I know the, the these four make perfect sense, right? Yeah. But when you start thinking, okay, the other was extracurricular, I'm, I'm like, I don't, I mean, I'm trying to guess ahead. Are you guys trying to guess ahead to this too, by the way? Okay. Uh, that's good. What's number five? Number five is a little obvious too. It's vendors. You know, especially when you start to get into the agency side of things, yes. you know, and a lot of agents do get into the vendor side because they know, hey, I got to buy some leads, right? So maybe they work with the lead vendor for direct mail or to help them with Facebook leads or whatever it might be. Ultimately, you got to start working with vendors and they're not just lead vendors. Like a vendor yeah. is truly anybody that you have to cut a check to as a part of an expense of running your business, whether it's marketing, advertising, your accountant that helps you out, your CPAs that help you out, a lawyer that helps you come up with this or that, yeah. like anybody you got to cut a check to. Um, now, ultimately, CRM. you're in control of yep. that relationship, right? Because you're their customer, True. so you want them to treat you well. But you also still got to take care of those vendors, too, and make sure that you have you, you pay your bills properly with them and so forth. Because, again, True. that word will travel around, right? Yeah. As soon as they find out that you don't pay your bills on time, they're going to tell their buddies, ah, you don't want to work with that group. You know, right. They're in collections with us on some other deals, things like that. So mm. you know, learn to treat your vendors well. And what's cool about these next four that we're going through, starting with vendors, is that they can kind of intertwine. And they don't necessarily have to follow this order that we're going to go through. Right. right? You can jump ahead. You don't have to go in this order on these next four. But they do kind of sometimes intertwine. So you'll find out soon that some of the vendors that you work with, if you take good care of them and they know you're a, a good business person, um, they will develop into some of these next relationship levels. Okay. So we got, you recruited, you're licensed, products, commission, vendors, number six. Colleagues. Colleagues. You're other people in the industry that you can yeah. network with and learn from. Whether you're in an office or not. Whether you're in an office or not. And that's why I love yeah. events like this because you're bringing all these people together to collaborate from different hierarchies, different industries, different agencies, different product lines, et cetera. And we're all learning from each other, mm -hmm. right? There are, you have colleagues in your insurance industry that are above you or below you as far as their, their skill set, their production level or whatever, right? So you can help the people that are below you and bring them up. You're not by sharing value with them, working with them. Uh, and then same thing, right? The people above you, you can learn from. Like, what are some of the things I learned just hanging out in that lunch, right? Sitting next to Lee Martins and I learned some stuff that, that, wow. uh, that's going to help me when I go back into Austin and, and get back into doing my thing. So um, network with your colleagues. Like, I see a lot of insurance agents that just, they go run their business and they don't talk to anybody. And that's yeah. it. And hey, that's okay if that's you. That's fine. But if you want to grow, if you really want to grow, and build something special, right. ultimately you need to get out there and network with people and find out what others are doing, what successes are they having, what can you learn from them. Uh, they can help you find better vendors to work with. Yes. They can help you find better carriers to work with, better contracts, better uplines maybe. So, I mean, ultimately you really want to build a great network of colleagues and friends that are in this business. Yeah, yeah. You surround yourself with people that are doing better than you, especially then you're going to do better. So, you know, Learn to network through your colleagues. Go to events and meet them and find out what they're up to. It's going to help you out eventually. Yeah. Well, what if there's an agent out there that doesn't understand the point of getting around other agents? They just don't get it yet. They don't, or maybe it's an ego thing. I don't know. It could be. Speak to that. Because I, I that happens. It's a fear-based mentality, right? Is exactly what it is. Yeah. But if they can understand that insurance is absolutely an abundant uh, industry. Amen. Then they, and all they have to do is get into the room the first time. Right. And once they surround themselves with a group of people that are professionals, that are ethical, that are doing a little bit better than they are, then they'll quickly realize, right? Yeah. And I was the very similar. Like I, I, I loved relationships already, but I developed in a different way. And then when I went to the very first eight percent, like I went with that kind of skeptical, yes. like, what is this really about? And then I realized, oh, it's a room full of people that want to help each other do better. Mm. They want to elevate the industry. They want to leave a mark in a different path or, or a different way than just going out there and selling insurance. They want to see the whole industry uh, end up better than when they found it yes. kind of thing. Right. Yes. So when I saw that immediately, it opened my eyes up and I dove in with both feet. So I think that's the difference is those agents just need to put take the chance and put themselves in a room once. And once they get into that right room, they'll realize, oh, there's a lot of great people in here. Yeah. You know, and even if it's just me finding some friends that are like-minded, right? But 
ultimately you're going to find people that are doing better than you can learn from. And that's going to help Correct. you be a better agent. Yes. You just get out of your comfort zone one time yep. and try it. It's amazing where it can lead. 100%. And a lot of times you get around people like this guy and you just think bigger for your own future. Mm hmm. Yeah, which is so. Powerful. I was already a pretty big thinker, and then I started hanging out with you and some of these other people that are that attend eight percent and some of these other events. I'm like, wow, like they're thinking on a different level. Yeah, and it's definitely allowed me to uh, to grow my thought process and start thinking on a much larger level of what's really out there. Like when you get in the insurance space, you're like, hey, you know, six figures is attainable. Like I see it, right? Yeah. But then you get into it, and sometimes you don't realize like how really it's not that difficult to go from six to seven. No, just some work ethic, just some smarts. It's just some of these next couple relationships we're going to get into, That's but right. there's not a huge difference. Like in, I used to think it was really difficult to attain a six, seven figure income in insurance. And now I'm realizing it's really not that hard. No, there's, it's, no. yeah, there's so many people doing it, it's ridiculous. And it as is. you always point out, there are more millionaires in insurance and financial services than any other industry on the planet. Exactly. So if you can make seven figures anywhere, this is the space. That's it. That's it. What? Well, yes, that's right. Speaking of seven figures, moving on to number seven. My favorite one. Okay. Level seven. Strategic Ooh. partnerships. Ah. So many agents don't go out there and find strategic partnerships. Yes. Your vendors in level five can become strategic partnerships. That's right. Right? Uh, where you maybe you develop a specific lead campaign with somebody that's really going to help you do something a little different and find a niche. Your colleagues in level six can help you develop strategic True. partnerships, introduce you to somebody, or maybe they're a PNC guy and you're in the life and health space and you realize like, hey, we can feed off each other and work together in a strategic way and referral relationships, whatever it is. So strategic partnerships, I see a lot of agents completely just miss the ball there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And with my wife and I, we're developing one right now that we're super pumped about with the primary care clinic where we're actually able to go in their facility. It's a beautiful clinic and they have a whole classroom set up that they teach classes. Mm. They teach health and wellness classes already. So we said, well, hey, how we come in there because they already specialize in the Medicare space. Their whole uh, business model is based on serving the Medicare beneficiary. They're, that's all okay. they do is 65 and up. And we sell Medicare. So we're like, look, this is going to be a perfect fit. Right, we can come in yeah. and we can teach the T65 class uh, to teach these people how to transition to Medicare, and we're going to introduce them to your clinic at the same time. It's a perfect, perfect option. They so they that. have uh, seven locations in Houston. We're working in one right now that's about to become two because it's already proven fruitful. And before you know it, I'm pretty sure we'll have all seven of those. And then they've got Colorado, uh, where are they? Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. They have other ones, which is perfect in our neck of the woods. That's the exact yeah. target market for us. So we're excited about that. So that's going to be a huge fruitful relationship. But you have to think a little more outside the box. And that's also why it's important, again, to get and network with your colleagues and get in these rooms because right. you can learn what strategic partnerships are, what's out there, how to develop them, the right ones to get introduced to, et cetera. Yeah. So that, that's a big space. That's a fun one. That's a fun one. And you sometimes you get creative. Like I was like Lee Martinson. I was sitting again, sitting next to him. Right. And I told you I already picked some stuff. That's his whole thing. Mm. Works with financial planners, accountants, et cetera, that help him find, because they're all working with people in retirement and he handles retirement benefits, Medicare space. That's his thing. Yes. So he's like, hey, I'm not interfering with your business. You're not interfering with mine, but we can work together and make more money and elevate and help more people True. by working together. Right? Two, what's the old saying? Two heads are better than one. Yeah. Right. So find partners out there that can help you grow. Smart. 100%. Smart. Talk about, and then you talk about growth. Yep. Moves you into the 8%. Yep. For number eight. Number eight. Number eight is, is the is the full octave. Okay. And that's your downline. Mm. Right? Now you're getting into the process of duplication. You've built this business okay. model. You've built these partnerships. You've got great colleagues that you're surrounding yourself with. Awesome vendor relationships. you got killer product to sell. you got a good host of customers. Yeah. Now it's time to duplicate yourself and really start to scale your business. And you do that with your downline. It's and good. obviously, you got to have a good relationship there because if you treat your downline like crap or you're not taking care of them, well, they're going to go jump ship. They're going to find another. Maybe they don't even sell insurance anymore because yeah. they found their way in through a bad upline. And then now they're like, oh, I'll just go back to the barbershop or wherever they're doing. So ultimately, that's that's the, the quote unquote, I guess, the holy grail of insurance is when you can start duplicating yourself and really start to blow out your business. That's good. Because if you can do it and you can do it well. Well, you should be teaching someone else to do it. And that's that's the real big business opportunity in insurance that a lot of people just completely gloss over. Correct. Right. Some people try to do a little too fast, uh, in my opinion. Um, and the, some people just don't do it at all. They're like, hey, I'm happy. I'm selling insurance. This is great. I'm like, 
you're really good at it. Like you could easily coach someone to do it. I mean, if you learned right. how to do it, I, I met you. You're not that smart. Yeah, like exactly. you can, you know, if you're doing really well, making a great income, help other people make a great income. Zig Ziglar said it, right? You help enough people get what they want. You will always get what you want on the flip side. That's right. So, you know, build a downline and that's, that's the final level that kind of completes it almost as an octave, if you will. Smart. Right. And once you get to that space, now your agency is, uh, it's a little abstract, but it's vibrating at a higher frequency. Right, and you're growing faster, and you're truly in a point where you can really start to scale this thing out. Yeah, I think it's really fun. This is good. Yeah, yeah it's a full circle. This makes a lot of sense. Hundred percent. And strong. then every time you get back to level eight, you're starting back over at level one again, just at a higher level, because now you're introducing that downline. You're the upline. You got to get them introduced to the state. You got to help them get some contracts. You got to introduce, help them get customers. Introduce them to some of the vendors that you work with, and so yeah. forth and so on. Yeah, you help enough people. Make some money, you'll make some more money too 100%. along the way. Yeah, that's what's special about this space. Dude, this is strong. Um, what have we not touched on that you would like to touch on today before we end? Because this is good. This is really good. I, I actually, this is my first time hearing this, by the way. And I've, I've hung out with this guy a lot. We've been together a lot. Uh, and this is the first time I'm seeing this. Same time as you are, by the way. This is good. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I was sitting because you always introduced me a lot as a great networker, great relationship builder. So I started thinking like, how can I, and actually Coach Burt kind of gave me this. It's like, you have to have a concept, mm. right? An original concept that you can start to talk about. And I was like, well, er everybody looks at me as kind of the relationship guy. So how can I blow out that concept to use it to educate agents? Smart. And then I came up with that. Smart. So It's good. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Someone wants to learn more about you reach out to you, talk to you, whatever. How would they go about doing that? Easiest way to find me is on Facebook. I'm all over it. Like you, He you, is. Yeah. I, I think I'm the only Tony Merwin on Facebook. So to search that name, you'll find me. Uh, or just look up some of the insurance groups. You'll see me participating, doing my best to deliver value. So I'm easy to locate. Facebook's usually the quickest way to find me. Yeah. He's all over the place. Or he's, he's on a bunch of stages, you know. You just show up somewhere and you're probably going to meet him very soon. Okay. I'm going to just throw that out there. That's, that's, that's Tony. Okay. Um, awesome job, brother. Thank you. Appreciate you and love in Puerto Rico. Uh, having a blast, man. This is outstanding. Yeah, it's awesome. It's cool hanging out. Love power players. Love you and grace. And I appreciate you being on the power player podcast. Yeah. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. You got a brother, Tony Merwin. See you on the next. One. Okay. So, but how do you go from 30 K to like this dude making a million bucks? You know, like that's strong. That's what clicked. So, you know, just. First off, I think a lot of people, when they start the insurance industry or they start working in the insurance industry, you know, yeah. they, they think it's going to be a lot easier than it is, right? Because yes. everyone that's trying to get you.